uh, the presentation. Okay, good. Hello, uh, thank you for, to the organization for inviting me. Uh, I will introduce briefly myself. I've been working, uh, I uh, developed for five, six years. I experienced all the problems you may uh, see uh, when introducing DevOps, staying late at night, fighting sysadmins, uh, having uh, trouble with the project manager, whatever. So after that, uh, I decided to uh, move on to methodology or to try to help teams to improve uh, their lives or at least the, the, the way they work. So I've been working for 10 years helping teams to improve their development practices, their project management practices. And for the last five years, I moved into Agile uh, so now I'm mostly helping teams uh, with uh, Scrum, uh, XP, and uh, lately I discovered a couple of years ago uh, this uh, discipline Agile Delivery, which I think is not uh, very well known, and I thought that it may be interesting at least to give you a brief idea of what it's DAD. Uh, later on, on the Ignite Talks, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more about this in five minutes. And, uh, well, it's going to have a little more, uh, or at least some uh, additional content to what you're going to see here. Uh, well, so what we're going to see, uh, I'm going to try to, to spend less than 30 minutes uh, on, the, on the presentation in case you have any doubt or comment, whatever, we can discuss it. Uh, so, let's move on. Uh, what is DAD? DAD, uh, Discipline Agile Level for short, is uh, placed at the uh, process level. So, with, when I started to see the uh, dev DevOps, uh, most of the things you, you will see on the books or you will see on, on the blogs and, and all the materials on the internet is about mostly uh, tools and uh, tools workflow, talking about Puppet, Chef, uh, Jenkins, and uh, trying to, uh, well, to, to give be best practices about uh, workflows, okay? How to perform effectively in these uh, automated em environments. So, uh, this is going, you, I guess, most of you, if not all, know Scrum. So let's, uh, this is built on Scrum, and it's complementary. At least it gives some foundation for the organization in order to collaborate, or at least for, from the organizational point of view, uh, trying to complement all the technical stuff we are going to, to see on, on this session. So this is going to be a little bit different from, from the other talks. So. Uh, let's uh, discuss some differences of uh, DAD to the best known frameworks or models like Scrum or Extreme Programming. Okay. Uh, if we consider the whole life cycle of the projects or the software delivery, uh, DAD is most about uh, solution delivery from, end from end beginning to end, from the planning of all the solutions to the operation. So it's taking care of those late stages like uh, deploying, operate, whatever, that uh, Scrum or XP is not uh, considering so much. So it's uh, first difference with uh, some those other frameworks. Okay, uh, DAD is mostly a book. Okay, that book you can see there on Amazon or any other place. It's written by what well, we will see later on by Scott Ambler. Uh, and well-known guy on, on some software methodology. And it's built, it's not inventing anything. It's built on, on existing stuff, like uh, mostly Scrum, Kanban, Lean, uh, some other methodologies like Agile Modeling, unif Unified Process, Safe, uh, XP, uh, and uh, well, so it's a, like a little bit mixture of, of different things around, okay? Uh, let's discuss briefly the, the, the features of DAD. The first one is people first. So it's in the middle of, or it's following the, the, meth, the philosophy of uh, the Agile Manifesto. So people must think, people, the teams must take decisions, and everything is not going to be defined on processes, whatever. So it's not the, the old Agile 
excuse me, the old defined everything uh, methodology, but it's, uh, it's an agile one. It's goal-driven, it's not prescriptive. What does it mean? It tells you what to do on the three big phases of the life cycle, the inception, the construction, and the uh, transition, and it gives you some patterns, but it's not going to be prescriptive. It's not going to, to tell you, do this step, this step, and this step. Okay, it's not going to be like ITIL or those methodologies which are quite pres prescriptive. So it tells you what to do, and, but not how to do. It's hybrid agile. What does it mean, hybrid? Hybrid means that it's not a core agile methodology. Scrum is a core agile methodology. This is taking some things from the methodologies or the philosophies of software development and delivery previously to agile. Okay, we will see. It's learning oriented. What does it mean? It gives a lot of importance to learning in organizations at three scopes, organizational level, team level, and domain level. What it means that all the individuals on the teams must know about the whole organization, must develop technically, of course, and must learn how to work in, uh, well, within the, the teams, okay? Uh, another, another feature is that it's a full delivery life cycle. We have seen that before. It's taking care from the beginning, from the inception of the initiatives, to uh, take care of the satisfaction of the users once the solutions are in place. Okay, and uh, well, we, the, the next one is solution focused, which means that uh, we are not considering just building software. We are considering the philosophy is building a solution, a solution that helps the user. If the users are not happy or are not satisfied by, by the software we deploy, uh, the solution is not effective. Uh, another feature is that uh, it's a risk value life cycle. You know, the uh, milestones of the life cycle, we consider the risks. So there's a risk management uh, strategy, but in a agile way. And last but not least is enterprise aware. What does it mean? That uh, development uh, teams should be aware of all the people or all the groups, other groups in the enterprise. And very interesting talking about DevOps, the operations team. Okay? Uh, how does uh, DAD help uh, DevOps? Okay? Uh, well, we see here the three big phases. Okay? Later on we will discuss what uh, a big transition phase is uh, here if we are talking about delivering fast. Uh, we will see. Uh, well, to, to sum up, you, you will have the presentation available. All the people or all the roles, including the, uh, the operations, are collaborating right from the beginning, from minute zero of the project in uh, defining these, these practices are included uh, within the AD. And uh, the, the, the goal is that all of them are collaborating from the beginning, from the definition of the architecture, or for, from the planning of the releases, in order to facilitate that the transition is going to be easy and fast, okay? And if possible, automated. Uh, you will see some other um, practices like continuous documentation, continuous integration, continuous deployment, parallel independent testing, and uh, release planning. Uh, all of them are aimed uh, to the, the goal that the solution at any moment is ready to be deployed, and that is quite aligned with uh, DevOps. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, this is going to be a little bit fast. The, the book is, is big. The methodology has a lot of information. So uh, I'm going to, 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 to go really fast about uh, the, the content. OK, uh, let's talk about uh, two things here. First is that on agile methodologies, on core agile methodologies, uh, they only talk about construction. Scrum or XP are focused on construction. Okay, uh, DAD uh, adds the beginning and the end phases. Inception gives importance to the to the inception of the project. It gives important importance to the uh, transition of the project. Uh, we will see or or the solution. We will see that can be automated. 
the, to, to sum up, the uh, main goal of the inception is to put everyone in consensus about how the project must proceed or must be planned. And that includes operations. Operations should be involved from the very beginning on defining the project. It's not going to have the software built and uh, handed off at the last, last stage, or stage of the project. And that's an anti-pattern, okay? So let's do the other thing, the, the things uh, the other way around. And uh, I would like to, to talk about the transition. Uh, transition, one of the uh, milestones is to be production ready. Production ready means that uh, operations should be uh, sure that uh, this is going to uh, be uh, working correctly on production, okay? Uh, well, uh, I'm not going, well, you probably won't, won't read that, but what I want to uh, outstand here is that uh, this is uh, an expanded version of the life cycle of uh, you will find on Scrum, okay? But basically, the, the points I want to stand is that uh, the backlog includes items coming from operations. Operations is expected to give us, or to give the team feedback about mm, things or items, features uh, are needed for the uh, next delivery. E uh, either the delivery is going to be mm, delivered tomorrow or the, deliver the delivery or the phase is going to be delivered on a month time. Operations is expected to give us feedback. Is going to be present on the planning, on the or the iterations, and not only the product owner is going to be present at the review or the demonstration. Operations is going to be present both on the uh, sprint uh, review and on the sprint retrospective because it's going to be part of the team. So uh, all the improvements to the way the team is delivery, delivering should be uh, suggested as well by operations. Uh, another, uh, an evolution of this life cycle, and this is going to be, to getting closer to what DevOps is, is that uh, DAD, uh, mature DAD teams are shifting into a lean way of working. I mean, they are not planning phases, either two weeks, three weeks, whatever. So they are aiming to work daily. Uh, this is getting closer. To, they are going to have their backlog as well, but they are expected to deliver it daily, the advanced or mature DAD teams. So that means that the same phases, that the um, transition is going to be uh, shrank into a very, if automated, into practically seconds or, or minutes. And this, this is what I wanted to, to tell, that uh, at the very beginning, and that happens as well when you're helping teams to go agile. You cannot expect teams to go agile and to do it right if uh, they are delivering, uh, if you expect them to uh, go from delivery solutions uh, once a quarter or once a year or whatever, and uh, you expect them to change and deliver uh, once a week. This is not going to work. You need to start the iterations to be big and to be shortened with the time until you arrive to the typical two weeks or three weeks delivery time or, or uh, sprint time. So this is happening as well with EAD. At the beginning, you will have a big inception. You will stay some weeks thinking about the project. You will have the big construction phase and you will have some weeks trying to stabilize and, and, and prove that the solution can work into production. This is a little bit similar to what we have in traditional development. But as we mature, we are going to shorten the phases. So on the second release, we are expected to take much less time in the inception, and we are expected as well to, take, uh, to shorten a lot uh, transition. And as we get, uh, we get more fit with uh, DAD, and we automate our activities, we are expected to achieve Something which is close to the, the, the ideal construction, short transition, construction, short transition, and this construction can be daily, can be weekly, but the idea is that the transition is the most automatic possible. And uh, the last thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, 
Well, uh, we, we, we said that uh, the idea is enterprise away, uh, aware. What it means that we have some more roles that the typical roles we will find on Scrum. On Scrum, we will have the team member, the Scrum master, or here they call it the team lead, and the product owner. Here on the um, core team, we have the architectural owner, or the architectural owner. So the architecture is, not going, is going to be involved from the very beginning. And the primary roles include stakeholders. And stakeholders, um, the most important role Consider a stakeholder is operations. So operations is going to be inside the team. So that's uh, more or less what uh, we are expecting from DevOps. That uh, operations is going to be very close to the developer, the developing team. Okay, and we will have some other secondary roles which are going to be involved, but not at, not at close or at, the, at least not daily in the development work. Specialist, independent testing. Uh, technical experts and some other uh, roles. So that was all. Uh, in case you have any doubt or any question, um, please uh, feel free to ask. And uh, you will find more information if you want on the DAD website, on the DAD book, or if you want to reach me and here and, qu and ask me something, whatever, I will be delighted to, well, to, to discuss it with you. Okay, uh, do you have any questions here? Comments? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. I'm uh, expecting to learn a lot from the technical side and the presentations we are going to be. The, the roster is exciting. So, uh, well, uh, thank you and see you here. <laughs>